So today we are going to uh, look at how to solve equations, um, exponential equations. Um, to solve exponential equations, mainly what you need, you need to make sure that both sides of the equality are written to the same um, base. Okay, so let me, let me show you some examples here of um, what I mean by that. So let's say if I have um, 14, or let's make it this way, 2 to the power of x is equal to 16, all right? So in order for you to be able to solve for that x, so when you have, like, when is 2 to the power of x is equal to 16, so I need to solve for that x. So in order for you to do that, you need to make sure that the base of the, of the right side is base of 2. So you're going to have to do guess and check and then see what number you can put here. So when you raise 2 to the power of that number, it's going to give you 16. Okay, so let's do guess and check. So 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So that's not 2 to the power of 2. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 2 to the power of 4, that is 16. So that means I can write it as 2 to the power of 4. So you see, instead of 16, now I have it 2 to the power of 4. And the reason I want to do that is because now, since I have the same base, if I'm saying 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 4, that right away, that right away makes x equals to 4. So I solved the question. Let's do another example here. So let's say if I have 3 to the power of x is equal to um, 27. All right. Now, again, my base here is 3, and I won't, I'm looking for what that x is. So in order for me to solve for that x, I need to make this side as a base of 3. And I have to guess and check. So 3 to the power of what is going to give me 27. 3 to the power of 1 is 3. 3 to the power of 2 is 9. 3 to the power of 3 is 27. So that means this here, this spot here, that's 3 to the power of 3, which makes, because I have the same base, right, I can drop the base and make my exponent equal to each other, and that's x equals to 3, and I solved for it. Now, Sometimes we're going to have a little bit more complicated ones, right? Where you're going to have to actually um, do more work. So let's say if I have 3 to the power of x plus 1 equals to 81. You're going to have to do exactly the same thing, right? So you want to make sure that your bases are the same. So 3 to the power of what gives me 81? We figured that 3 to the power of 3 is 27. Now we're going to try 3 to the power of 4. Is 3 to the power of 4 81? Yes, it is. Now you see that I have here 3 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 3 to the power of 4. Now the whole idea is to solve for x. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop the base, and I'm going to make my exponents equal to each other. So that means x plus 1 is equal to 4. So if I'm solving for x here, I'm going to bring the 1 over, and that's going to be x equals to 4 minus 1, so that means x equals to 3. Let's see if that works. So what we're going to do here, we're going to check our work. Okay, To check our work, I'm going to plug in x in 4, so the value of x in here. right? So I just got the x is equal to 3. I'm going to plug it in here. So what I have here is 3 to the power of 3 plus 1 equals to 81. Let's see. Is that true? 3 plus 1 is 4, so I have 3 to the power of 4 equals to 81. Is that true? Now, what I have to do is I have to enter this in that calculator. So 3 to the power of 4, and that gives me 81 equal to 81. So that means my left side, <coughs> excuse me, the left side is equal to the right side. That means my solution is correct, okay? So the answer is x equals to 3. 
Now, let's go back to our lesson. So in this equation, um, we, have, we have an example. All right, so when performing a test at genetic disease, it is necessary to take a sample of cells from the patient and then allow the cell population to increase before testing. Suppose that the initial population consists of 100 cells and the population doubles every day. The population over time can be modeled by the following equation. So they've given me an equation. Let's see if I can. So where n represents the number of days and p represents the population. After how many days will the population of cells reach 12,800? So I'm looking at how many days. So I'm solving for n when the population is 12,800. So the equation right now in this equation, I'm replacing the population with 12,800 and I'm looking for n. So I have the following, 12,800 equals to 100 times 2 to the power of n. Now I'm solving for n. I can't solve for n unless I have just the base and the power. So what I have to do here, I have to get rid of that 100. So I have to bring that 100 over. That's the first step always, get rid of this, because you just want the base by itself. So you have 12,800 divided by 100 equals to 2 to the power of n. Now, simplify this. That's going to give me 128 equals to 2 to the power of n. Now, my job is to make the left side to the same base as the right, right side. So I have to look on the calculator. I have to test 2 to the power of what gives me 128. 2 to the power of what gives me 128. So on your calculator, you're going to try all the numbers. So you know, like 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 4, 2 to the power of 5, until you reach 128, until you get the answer 128. So if you do that on the calculator, you're going to get 2 to the power of 7. And that is 2 to the power of 7 is equal to, is, is equal to 128. So n is equal to 7 which means that after seven days, the population is going to reach 12,800. That's the solution. All right. Let's see if we can look at another example here. All right, so what do I have here? I have solve for x, and then you are given 3 to the power of x minus 4 plus 4 equals to 85. So 3 to the power of x minus 4 plus 4 equals to 85. So remember, you want the base and the exponent by itself. So the first thing you want to do, you want to get rid of anything added to that base and the exponent. So in this case, I'm going to have to move the 4 over. And then what I have here is 3 to the power of x minus 4 is equal to 85 minus 4. So that's going to be 3 to the power of x minus 4 equals to 81. Now, what do I need to do? Because I only have a base and exponent and the, the answer, so now I have to change my answer to the same base. So in this case, my base is 3. 3 to the power of what gives me 81? 3 to the power of 4. So what you see here is 3 to the power of x minus 4 is equal to 3 to the power of 4. So that right away gives you, so you, because you have the same base, you can drop the base, and that makes the exponent equal to each other. So x minus 4 equals 4, bring over the 4. So x equals to 4 plus 4, which x equals to 8. And that would be the answer for this. 
right? So make sure that you always, always want to isolate for the base and the exponent, lead them by itself, and then move everything else to the other side, either by changing, by, by changing operation. So either by, if it's an addition, you're going to subtract, subtraction, you're going to add. If it's a multiplication, you're going to divide and vice versa. All right? So I want you to try to do this. Now, sometimes you, know, you won't be able to find a um, whole number. So sometimes, like, let's say if I give you 3 to the power of x equals 16, okay? You can try 3 to the power of any number, and that's not going to give you 16. You're going to have a decimal. So in this case, for us to be able to solve, we're going to have to actually graph, okay? So if I'm looking at this, I won't be able to find anything. Three to the power of two is nine. Three to the power of three, that's 27. So you see there's a jump right there. So in this case, this is where you need to graph. And if I wanna show you this, so three to the power of X, you're gonna have a, a, like a whole um, exercise to do, but let me show you what we need to do here. Let me just erase this. So remember that we want to see when would 3 to the power of x equal to 16, okay? So if I go to decimals, and so the two things that I'm looking at is 3 to the power of x and I'm looking at 16. So what I have to do, I have to graph two things. First of all, I have to graph y equals to 3 to the power so make sure that you put that hat thingy to the power of x, okay? So that's um, y equals 3 to the power of x. And I have to graph y equals 16 because these are the two equations. So I was looking at when is 3 to the power of x equals to 16, okay? Now, in order for me to graph to see this, I'm looking at when they're equal to each other. So when the two graphs are intersect. As you can see here, I can't see the blue graph, right? The blue graph is way up high. So what I need to do, I need to actually set my parameters. So if you go to the wrench right here and you set your parameters. So what do you want your X to be? Let's leave X as is for now. And let's do Y as up to from zero to 16. How come this is not giving me an equation? Yeah, let me just move this a little bit. And let's try this again. Okay, there you go. You see now the graph, I see where it is. I see where that point is. And that is the point of intersection. So my answer for X is going to be 2.524. Now this one is beautiful because now this one, it just gives me, so once I see the two graphs, I can press on that point and uh, it will give me the actual point. So you see that uh, the 2.524 is the value for X. So if I do three to the power of 2.524 on the calculator. So if I do that on the calculator, it's gonna give me something either very close to 16 or it's gonna give me exactly 16. Depends on how uh, this is, is um, rounding. So I'm going to do 3.2524, and that gives me 16.0049, which is very close to 16. So we're going to just round to 16, okay? So that means in this case, the solution is x equals 2.524, all right? So whenever you can't find a solution, whenever you can't do x, like by, by just, you know, guessing and checking, you're going to have to graph and then you're going to have to see, you're going to have to set your parameter. You're going to have to move your graph to see um, when are these two points intersecting, these two graphs intersecting. I hope this is helpful for you guys.